is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 64. And today we're talking about the Watts family, which is a really tragic case, pretty local to us, that really got a lot of nationwide coverage this year. Yeah, and we kind of yeah, and um, a lot has come out since we first talked about it. We talked about it on the podcast when it first happened, and then I did a video on it as well. But so much has come out since then that we figured we would just do a whole episode and dive in and see what really happened. Because at that point, we were kind of just assuming it was before a lot of stuff came out. Like yeah, it was evidence. before he was even like on trial or anything. So, yeah. you know, we now know the complete story yes. of the Watts family tragedy, and and that's what it really is. And it's heartbreaking. Yeah, we've avoided doing it. We both have because it's sad. It's so it's upsetting. Sad. It's definitely not a fun. Topic, no, but. no. And and I mean, I think it's important to cover, you know, everything, both sides yeah. of the spectrum, you know, mm -hmm. even if no matter how sad it is, you mm -hmm. know, it's important to share people's stories and maybe hopefully it might prevent something like this from happening again. Maybe. But I don't know. It's it's a really a really tragic case. But before we dive into that today, let's go ahead and dive into our uh, news stories for this week. So first things first, Google tracks your location and shares it with police even when your phone is off. So if you disable GPS on your phone or even deactivate phone tracking on your phone, which you can do, or even turn off your phone, it's still possible for Google and the NSA to monitor your every move. Oh, well, fuck. Basically, as long as you have the device with you, it's still trackable. Even if it's off. Yeah. That's insane. Isn't that crazy? That is. And then, of course, our, we're so addicted to our phone. So most people have their phone on them all the time. Right. Especially if you leave your house. Yeah. Like the only time I think a lot of people don't have their phone on them is if they're in their own house and it's like on a charger upstairs or down, whatever. Even then, I feel like most people keep their phones with them everywhere yeah, they go, even, even at then. home. But I mean, anytime you leave the house, you definitely have it. Yeah. That's freaky. So what the controversy is, and I mean, we've known this for a while that Google collects your data and your location data, you know, from your computers, your web browsers, you know, that little pop up like on your computer that says allow your location, like especially if you use Google Chrome, mm -hmm. it's grabbing your location of where you're at and recording yeah. that. And basically Google compiles all this data, including data from like Google Maps, obviously, and they store it inside this massive database that they've called they've got called the sensor vault which contains detailed location records of hundreds of millions of devices from around the world. And the records reportedly contain location data going all the way back to 2009. Wow. And it's collected no matter whether people are making calls or yeah. using the apps or not. It's just being collected. So, I mean, I think this is the world that we're moving to. We talked about this a, mm -hmm. a little bit last episode with surveillance and everything's going to be surveilled. Well, in reality, we kind of are actually like yeah. being tracked and surveilled right now. Yeah. It makes you wonder like how people that commit crimes and then, you know, go missing or like aren't around to be served or are hiding out or something. Yeah. How they do that. Yeah. I think it's so hard to hide nowadays. Well, they ditch the phones. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Most people that go missing leave a phone behind because if the missing person had their phone. No, with I'm talking them, about like criminals, like running away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, for example, those guys that hit um ricky sandoval yeah the story i covered in back in december right you know they've been gone they haven't found them but they're both gone and a lot of times criminals use burner phones or phones that don't even have like yeah gps and it has to have like gps has some type of tracking yeah in that it. makes sense god crazy. and plus you can't just like if there's millions and millions of records you have to have some inkling as to what the phone is how to like identify which device to track the records back to does that make sense mm-hmm so even if they did have their phone, it'd still be somewhat hard to figure out it, yeah. who it is right? if you don't know who it is, you know. That's true. But another part of the controversy is that police are using something called a geofence warrant to access location data from devices that are linked to individuals who have no connection to criminal activity and have not provided any reasonable suspicion of a crime. So they may go, they're able to, through this warrant, basically just go sift through the data whether or not they know exactly whose data they're looking after. So there's a chance that law enforcement could be looking at your devices, you know, where your movements essentially without your permission or without you being, sus you know, sus uh, suspect of a crime. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's just crazy to me though. I can't believe we're already at that point, but I mean, I guess it makes sense. So do you think they should be able to do that or 
are we losing our privacy and we need to take it back? I don't know. Again, it's hard. It's the same thing as with like DNA right now and geneal genetic genealogy is very controversial in that right, way. Yeah. Like are yeah, we same invading kind of people's privacy? But I think if we can solve heinous crimes, it's like worth it. I don't know. It's hard to say because I mean, it's a double edged sword, like really anything. And I mean, that's the biggest thing with both of the things, uh, you know, DNA and GPS location is that it is solving a ton of crimes and helping yeah, get people faster yeah. because like one of the first things law enforcement do is they go to the phone records. Like we'll see in the Watts yeah. case today, they go and get his phone records and look at his text messages, look at where he was, look at all these different things. So they can pinpoint exactly where he was versus like back, you know, early 2000s, they could only really pin the nearest cell tower for most crimes. They would well, if it has GPS, yeah. If they have GPS records, then they know exactly oh, okay. where you are. So this was, yeah. So if you have a smartphone or something like that, right? Exactly. Be because before, that when there wasn't like right. Google Maps on your phone, right? They would trace it off the where the call was made, right. which okay. pings off the tower and back okay. to an area. Mm -hmm. So it's gotten like really precise. Like, look yeah. at Find My iPhone, which you use yeah. all the time. I yeah, I lose my phone all the time, and it's always like in my bed. <laughs> and it can like pinpoint almost to an exact location in your house. Almost yeah. it feels like it can, or sometimes it's like way wrong. But yeah. it depends. <laughs> but I feel like it gets it pretty accurate. Yeah, like for the most part. So yeah, so th that's kind of where things are headed. And I don't know, I'm kind of split on this because at the same time, I don't want to be spied on. I don't want somebody, yeah. I don't feel good about the government having this like reach into my personal life and all of this information on me. And I mean, that's why I personally, like what can you do about this, right? Well, you can actually go and disable all this stuff, tracking and all these things which I typically do, um, except for my phone. I don't, because I, I like Google Maps. I use that all the time. Yeah. So if I'm using that, it's getting collected. Yeah, or like a Yelp or something like yeah. that. Yeah, or like my computer. I don't really care about my location on my computer or anything like that. So I disable all of that shit, you know, Yeah. block it up. So I don't know. It's, it's pretty controversial. A lot of people think it's going against like the Fourth Amendment and, you yeah. know, that it's unlawful searching. And hmm. I don't know. It's It's really hard. But at the same time, I think, the good that comes out of it, how we've caught, you know, terrorists and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like it's yeah, very much needed, but maybe there should be a little bit more, you know, steps to the process as opposed to just like Being law enforcement just get free range to it. Yeah. Right. You have to have good reason to be able to access that. Yeah. But let's be real. They're never going to do that for us. They don't give a shit. No. And they could even tell us that they're doing that and then look at our information True. anyway. So. Well, we already found that out from WikiLeaks. Yeah, exactly. So, so. that the government was like no, spying on our telephone yeah. conversations and so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we win here. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I think it's just going to get more and more. But the second story that I have for you guys is very interesting. Uh, another professor, an Oxford University professor, claims aliens are already breeding with humans on Earth. So this is a real professor too, oh. like a very smart individual. Um, named Dr. Young Hai Chi, an instructor in Korean at Oxford's Oriental Institute. Wow. Thinks that this new species that aliens are breeding will save Earth from annihilation from climate change, which is really interesting. So there's actually oh, like a point so to it. This sounds like Avatar or something. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of sound like kind something of. like that. No, you're right. But that like was like more breeding. like virtual, a virtual world. Remember? Yeah, yeah, those, yeah, yeah little contraptions. I gotta see that movie again. So basically, he believes that there's a strong correlation between climate change and alien abductions. His book, which is written in Korean, is called Alien Visitations and the End of Humanity. In his book, he's identified four types of aliens. Small, tall and bold, scaly with snake eyes, and insect-like. Scaly with snake eyes. and in So this is what we keep hearing. Right. This makes so much sense. Right. So... I'm guessing the smalls would be like little grays. Yep. Talls are big grays. No, tall and bold are tall whites. The oh. Nordic. Yeah. Well, aren't there little, they're tall grays and no. small grays? No. No. <laughs> oh, I thought there were. No, I mean, there so, might. Okay. I, I don't know. There might be tall, <laughs> tall grays. As far as we know, they're just so, short though. Oh, so this is a tall white? Yeah. Tall and bold, meaning like bold white skin. I'm assuming like a tall white. Is yeah. this the one my sister saw? At the grocery yeah, store. A tall Nordic. They're the Nordics are My tall. My sister thinks whites, she yeah. saw an alien at the grocery store. <laughs> I don't know. In the milk section. In the milk section. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe she did. She, maybe. 
scaly with snake eyes would be like reptilian. Boom. And then insect like would be those mantis. The mantis species, which is very weird. And and here we go. Like we don't know if he's taking that from right. what's already out there. Right. And where's where's um the blue avians? Isn't that also a true? Alien race? I, that's that's one race that I don't see that much outside of that little group that believes in them. Yeah, the blue avians. Yeah, huh? Not quite as like popular as the main four yeah. types of aliens. Interesting. That theoretically exist. Huh? Okay. So why does he think this? So he, in so his whole theory is that he believes the insect aliens, so the praying mantis, may be in charge and give orders to the other types. He oh, said the aliens fuck, exist. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. That's the last one we want to be in charge. I don't want to take orders from a praying mantis. God, how and that would make that? sense because they're so smart. And I don't know if any of you guys have seen a praying mantis up close or even a, Kate, a Katie did. They're basically the same thing. They're in the same yeah, little family. Yeah. But they look insane close up. Like in the sun, their skin is like. They're wild looking. Really colorful and almost, ex I don't even know how to explain it. I've looked at them. I've spent a lot of time looking at Katie Dids in our backyard. And I would not be surprised if a praying mantis type thing did exist. Because they're so like, they're so smart. And yeah. the way they move. And that'd be so They're wild. very alien-like. Yes. Very alien-like. Yes. Totally. Compared to other like bugs. miniature aliens. Stuff. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. And they're weird. But they're crazy. They eat off their heads yeah like when they mate they rip the head off yep, of yeah. the male they're savage they're just like yep i've watched beasts. it before they like go for the eye first and it's like little snack after yeah. after they bang yep, that's how it goes that's crazy man gotta love nature so yeah maybe they're this insect type alien he's talking about is these praying mantis uh species but he went on to say that the aliens exist in their own biosystem that humans cannot experience because our perception is limited by our organs Whoa. That's very interesting to think about. Limited by our organs. So they don't, so he's saying that they're not like, they don't have like organs. And I also read in another version of the article that he thinks that these alien species are like invisible or can go invisible or we can't see them. All of them, them or just the snake or the. I think all one. of them have the ability to come in and out of, you know, appearance. What if there's just one here? Well, that's his whole thing is he thinks they're living amongst us. Like we should just they're invite here. one for an interview. Yeah. If there's any uh, aliens out there like to be on the podcast, <laughs> please hit, up. His, hit up my email. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's really interesting. And he, he goes on to say that the aliens are said to be highly intelligent and he believes they could solve the problems on Earth in the future, such as climate change. Yeah. Wow. He was quoted as saying, so they come not for the sake of us, but for the sake of them their survival but their survival is actually our survival as well the survival of the entire biosphere oh well that's good to know so they the earth is mm. as important to us as it is to them it's part of the is, universe right and it could be a alien organism itself and that they can communicate with it on a deeper level than we can wow and they get different things from it like i think what this is all leading to is that these higher developed species that are just way more aware than we are and can connect with all sort of the hidden forces of the universe and the earth. Mm -hmm. And we just can't cause we're just more, a more primitive species and we've yet to really understand the complete connection between the earth and us and the rest of the universe and other life out there, but they are just ahead of us and maybe they're able, you know, they are flying around in their craft and just living here amongst us, observing, you know, yeah, waiting well, if to the step planet in. is actually that important to them, they would be here, right? Like, yeah, hundred percent. At least observing. Well, that makes me feel really good. No, that's what I wanted to share. This is because if that's real. it's a plausible, it's a plausible idea. That's a good idea. It sounds crazy, but it is plausible that they are here helping us while interbreeding with humans in order to create hybrid hybrid human species that maybe are more intelligent and then can influence the rest of us. And, or maybe just like people that are really brilliant that have got great ideas are some type of hybrid being almost. And maybe they just have this, Elon Musk. <laughs> I knew you were going to say him. He's maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe Dr. Greer. Alien. Oh, I was like, 
pretty close. Yeah. Honestly, sometimes I think he might be. Who knows? I mean, who really knows? If I mean, anyone would be, it'd be him, right? It would be. He's got the direct connection. <laughs> but for real. But his really theory is, yeah, I mean, it seems pretty spot on. And he thinks that the aliens will appear on Earth when the planet is facing significant problems such as climate change or nuclear war. We have Which, to wait till then. Can you guys come a little sooner before right? this? Right. We're trying like we're dumb. We're not going to get our shit together about global warming. That is becoming really evident. It's just not going to happen. No. Like we're going to need help. So it's we have to wait till it gets way worse. Right. It seems <laughs> According to this theory. Yeah, which is a I feel like a theory that's shared among a lot of like ufologists yeah, type people it is. the UFO UFO community. Definitely. I think kind of believes this sort of idea that when, you know, shit really hits the fan on earth and you know, all of the ice caps are melted. The sea levels like a hundred feet higher. We have to wait till it gets that bad, though. I know that's the sad thing about it is like there, it's going to be a really crazy state of the world before I feel like if aliens stepped on or stepped in would. Hmm. But then I'm also worried that what if they step in and then just like, all right, we're going to take over this. You guys yeah, suck. Yeah, it could be like that. Now we run the planet. Yeah, and then you think about all those things we talked about last week, like the freedom centers yeah, and yeah. stuff. And having the little name tags and yeah. everything. Like, what if they enforce something like that? They could. They could full on like enslave us and make us or force us to like evolve yeah. as I don't know. There's infinite possibilities. Well, so yeah, I just we'll have to were, just find out. <laughs> that's all we can do, right? Just enjoy the ride. Yeah. We're all on this and look at interesting theories. Ride of life happen. and just contemplating. <laughs> now here's a really <laughs> kind of funny story, honestly. So a man says he fled an Austrian prison over a decade ago, has recently turned himself in to police in Salzburg, telling them that he was fed up with living in Spain's Canary Islands. So this guy, 10 and a half years ago, escaped prison in Austria, somehow made it to the Canary Islands and has been there for 10 and a half years, just like living freely on the beach, essentially. And he got tired of that and said that it was getting too crowded and he was just done dealing with it. So he decided to come back home. Was he living actually on the beach or was he like, did he have like an apartment and stuff? Oh, I don't know. that. I don't, I don't think we know if he was actually living on the beach or in a building. I'm yeah, sure well, he had a place there or something. He probably had a job. Ten and a half years. You can't just live on the beach for ten and a half years. <laughs> That's true. And this is like a popular vacation destination. So, I mean, maybe he was and the crowds got too big and started like coming up to his front porch and he was like nah i'm done that's so wild because i just i feel like your situation must be bad to want to go to jail instead of living in paradise <laughs> he said it used to be nice and that he had lived there long enough and he was just tired of it and ready to come back what and turn himself in what a strange dude very weird right i would never do that you stay at the beach dude seriously don't go to jail. He's probably regretting it. But he's sitting there like, fuck, the and beach was 60, pretty damn nice. He's 64. Oh, my God, dude. Just so 64. Retire at the beach. Seriously. Why would you go back? I feel like there's got to be more to it. Maybe he really was living outside or something or I don't know. When I first heard this story, I thought he was like living outside or like on an island. When I heard the islands, I was like, maybe he was like lost on an island. Yeah. And he's just sick of having to survive yeah but no this looks like he was just like living on a near a beach. yeah i mean look at the picture of the beach it's super beautiful there yeah super beautiful beautiful sandy beach. like why would you want to come back and go to jail mm, so yeah they, they put him back in jail they verified that he had escaped <laughs> prison and now he's probably gonna be in jail probably for the rest of his life good job dude but hey it's it's his choice he wanted to do yeah, that i so. guess good for you for having some morals and coming back <laughs> god I don't know if that was me i'd be like no i'm staying i don't care why would you want to go back to prison or i'd change locations maybe i mean if you got to the canary islands why why didn't you just go somewhere else like how do you get there and he couldn't get somewhere somewhere else like i don't know it's very weird there's it not a, weird. this just happened so there's not a ton of details about it but okay we should keep we'll an keep eye an eye on it because <laughs> yeah it's very bizarre you don't hear that every day of somebody escaping to a paradise island and then 10 years later deciding yeah i'd rather be in jail yeah <laughs> no that's after very escaping strange. too that is very strange yeah super bizarre but let's go ahead and get into the watts case and before we do i want to thank our sponsors for today 
So one thing that I truly love in life is subscription boxes. For some reason, it's like, it feels like Christmas because you're getting this surprise gift in the mail (laughs) and it comes and sometimes you don't even remember that it's coming. So it's like a nice surprise. So one of my favorite subscription boxes is FabFitFun. This is actually a seasonal box if you've never seen it before. So it comes four times a year and it's filled with full size beauty, fitness and lifestyle products. They have a bunch of really high quality brands such as Tarte, Kate Somerville, Anthropology, Free People, Dr. Brandt. And that's just the beginning of it. So even in this box right here, we have the new Tarte skincare drink of H2O. So I'm really excited to try that. This is cruelty free, which is awesome. This box came with a lot of skincare stuff, which is great. I'm trying to redo a bunch of my skincare because I'm going completely cruelty free. Um, So these products are going to be awesome. It also has like a foot cream, everything that I would need for summer. And then it also has this really cute little dish in here and a towel, a beach towel. So you never really know what you're going to get in it. But I always love and use everything in my FabFitFun boxes. They're really fun to get. It retails for $49.99, but it is valued at over $200. So check it out at www.fabfitfun.com and use the code MILEHIRE so you can save $10 on your first box, making it only $39.99. Again, that's fabfitfun.com and use the code MILEHIRE because you deserve to treat yourself. So as you guys know, we are big fans of Quip. We've been using Quip toothbrushes for a long time now, and they honestly are the best toothbrushes that either of us have ever used. And one of the best things about Quip toothbrushes is that they have the two minute timer because I know for me personally, I never knew how long to brush my teeth. You know, a dentist recommend at least two minutes, but I know for a while I probably wasn't going the full two minutes. So having that built in timer with the Quip toothbrush is absolutely essential going forward. So what's awesome is that now the whole family can have their mouths refreshed with Quip because yes, Quip has come out with Kids Quip, which has the same two minute timer, but just tweaked down for a kid's size mouse. So just this size is actually different. Otherwise, it is almost identical to the original adult version of the toothbrush. So if you have kids out there, this is definitely something I would highly recommend you get because Quip really does a great job at keeping your mouth clean. But I think my favorite thing about Quip is they make it extremely easy to make sure that you always have a fresh brush head. In fact, they automatically deliver it on a dentist recommended schedule every three months for just five dollars. So you can always have a fresh toothbrush heads. So, yeah, that's why I love Quip and why I think you will, too, and why over a million people have happy, healthy mouse because of Quip. Quip starts at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash mile higher right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash mile higher. So let's get into the Watts family. So Christopher Lee Watts, his parents are Cindy and Ronnie Watts and Shanann Catherine Watts. Her parents are Frank and Sandra Ruchek. And both of these guys were natives of Spring Lake in Aberdeen, North Carolina. And where this happens is in Colorado, Northern Colorado, actually. But prior to moving here, they were from North Carolina. And from the outside, these guys looked like a picture perfect couple. Mm -hmm. You know, Shanann was clearly very in love with Chris Watts, her husband of nearly six years. Typical Colorado family, like very much so, you know, your average family just getting started with their their life and yep they had a they had a nice house in a mm-hmm. neighborhood up in northern colorado actually pretty close to where we used to live we, very close we used to live probably about like 20 minutes away 15 minutes away from where these guys lived yeah and frederick is a tiny tiny little, little town, town up north so this really shook that area oh it yeah was crazy oh yeah i mean this shook the entire world pretty much the yeah amount of media coverage it got and hence why you've probably heard of chris watson and mm-hmm. this tragedy so to just give you some perspective on Shanann Watts and who she was, she was an extremely loving person, extremely kind, just one, you know, an exceptional human being. And she actually said in, you know, the months leading up to this tragedy that she was lifted out of a trying period in her life by meeting her husband, Chris. She quote was saying as, I believe that everything in life happens for a reason. And I also believe people are placed in our life for a reason. Yeah. She said he randomly sent her a friend, re- friend request and she just decided on a whim to accept it. And then they ended up getting married, which is crazy. And yeah. it's just like, ah, and, and that was the thing is she worked for this company called thrive, which is essentially an online business. And so she worked from home and she was on social media a lot cause she was promoting mm-hmm. this brand. Yes. So there's tons and tons of like Facebook live video of her, 
mm-hmm. you know, doing live streams and videos of it's her. Kind of like kids. an MLM, one of those multi. Yeah, it's like Mary Kay or, um, I don't know, Sensi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sort of like that. Yeah, yeah. it's like a referral based business yeah. where you have mm-hmm. to be referred to it in order to be a customer. So she you know, was online quite a bit and there's actually lots of footage and there's actually a video a few months before um, this happens where she's just talking on camera. I'll play a little bit of it. Hey everybody, say hi. Say hi. You don't want to say hi? Um, So I just wanted to come on here live. Say hi. (laughs) Hi. Hi. so Saturday's here. I don't even know what time it is. It's 8.30 here um, in Colorado. And uh, I love waking up now on Saturdays and being able to enjoy my family. We never have to... See, careful, Cece. We never have to really... Uh, we never have determined where we're going. No plans, really. Summer's coming. Summer's coming. And we're super excited. Um, Bella, Bella. Come here for a second, baby. Um, we're really excited for summer because, um, so much goes on in the summer here in Colorado. There's concerts every weekend, um, Friday, Saturday nights. There's always some kind of concert going on and, uh, get together with friends, cookouts and just, um, enjoying life. And I'm really excited this summer because some of the amazing things that go on on the weekends are, were when I was working, um, for a company where I had to, um, be in every weekends because that's the demand. The demands were always the weekends so they needed more help. So um, I, I feel really blessed this summer. I'm going to San Diego with Chris. We're going um, June 22nd through the 26th. So I'll just stop it there. But I just wanted to play that because I wanted you to hear her voice and just hear what kind of person she was because this will mm-hmm. put everything in just like perspective for you of how yeah. just like crazy fucking sad that this whole thing is one of the reasons why people feel so connected to this case is there is so much video of her um beforehand where she seems to have such a good life and yeah um it seems so happy and such a good family like they're talking about having family time on a saturday going on trips on vacation like everything seems completely normal Mm -hmm. completely just yeah i mean your typical family happy family from you know just how she presents herself. I mean, she seems like such a kind and sweet person. And it further in this video, um, she talks about how her own growing confidence and independence while conceding with these battles she had with her insecurities, including health challenges. Um, Chris, she met Chris because of those health challenges and that he was like super supportive and, mm-hmm. you know, helped her get through these tough times in her life. And like Kendall said, they, Got a random request from Chris on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's how they met at the time. And a North Carolina resident actually said that at the time she quit her job of nine years, lost friends because they didn't understand and felt horribly inside. And didn't she understand was, that she looked perfectly fine, but felt horribly inside. Right. She was just really depressed and right. in a dark place when she got the friend request at first. And she was like, Oh, I'm never going to actually meet him. But then she decided, you know, to just go ahead and accept him. And then she says, one thing led to another. And eight years later, we have two kids and we live in Colorado. And he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Yeah. And she went on to say that her love story with Chris would inspire others. Quote, know that no matter how hard life gets, no matter how you low you feel, know that deep down, like in your heart, there's a purpose. There's a reason for everything, mm-hmm. which is so crazy to think about when, you start thinking about what happened to her and it's just crazy. She said, because I got so sick, I let him in and he only knew me at my worst and he accepted me. Like literally she just like in these videos, she just gushes about Chris and talks about how literally she gave him every excuse to run away and yet he never did. And he stuck around and he was really there for her. She's, Quoting saying he's amazing. I can't tell you how wonderful it is. Just absolutely a hundred percent fully in yeah. love with this man. Mm-hmm. And she was having like gastrointestinal issues. Um, so she he even went to a colonoscopy with her. She says that 
I rejected him, pushed him away time after time. I canceled dates last minute saying that that's how life is with these health challenges. You cancel things last minute and he still stuck around. So yeah, he was like a hero to her. Absolutely. And he, and he really like took her out of this dark place and like mm-hmm. became her, her partner, up. lifted her up and, and yeah. created like the picture perfect yeah. life. And it's, that's what it seemed like for him and her family. And there's so many pictures of them just looking like so happy and like nothing is wrong whatsoever. But as we've learned, people can put on a front and put on, you know, fake it to make it. And below the surface, there's all sorts of things happening and, and turmoil Mm -hmm. and even mental illness that is undiagnosed could be happening. I mean, it it becomes just baffling when we, you find out like what happened here. So let's go ahead and go through the timeline of events leading up to that tragic day. So on June 11th, 2018, Shanann Watts records videos of her surprising her husband with mm-hmm. the news that she's pregnant for a third time. So let's take a quick look at at this video. So for those listening, I'll set it up the scene for you. She is in her living room and she's got the shirt on that says, oops, we did it again. She's going to surprise Chris as he comes into the house. <laughs> I like that shirt. Really? Really. That's awesome. So pink means... That's just the test. I know. It just says the pink is going to be girls. I don't know. Just the test. That's awesome. Wow. He seems so not actually happy. Like you can just tell it is so fake. He's like, that's awesome. (laughs) He's like, we did it again. Yeah. And then the fact that he said, does the pink lines mean that they're girls? I'm sorry, but one, what kind of father that has had two children already and has been with, you know, with his wife through two pregnancies doesn't doesn't know. know that you can't tell the gender from a urine stick that early. That's very true. That's so, why? Like that, what? you seem like such a detached dad. Yeah, to, well, that's to, what it is. Like I can't imagine if you're like, is this a girl? Like you would even know better than to to think that the pink means it's a girl. That's like weeks of being pregnant, you know. Like, and I like you can't how he like that. comes over to look at it, and he's like, yeah. Hopefully, this is not what it is. And I think hopefully he wanted not. a boy. If anything, in his head, he was thinking like it should be like, you know. Well, Nico. Maybe he. Yeah, and it ended up being a boy anyway. But not that it fucking mattered. But yeah. But yeah, the fact that he seems like just completely detached yeah. from it. And the reason for that is because he's already started talking to a coworker, starting an affair essentially with Nicole Kessinger. Mm-hmm. And a few days later, he actually enters her contact information into the phone. And we now, you know, we now know that Kessinger would become his mistress. Mm-hmm. And they started dating seriously at the end of June. And Chris allegedly initially denied this affair to police but authorities said they carried out a two day investigation and confirmed the infidelity. Wow. So they had only been dating for about a month or so when this happened. Yeah, it was very, it wasn't long at all. That's wild. Yeah, it is really wild. So there's like pictures of him on his phone that they, they have now of him and his mistress Kessinger. And on June 17th, 2018 Kessinger tells police that sometime before father's day, Chris Watts tells her he is married and has kids, but is in the process of separating. Meanwhile, in reality, on Father's Day, Shanann Watts writes a tribute to him on Facebook, quote unquote, saying, Chris, we are so incredibly blessed to have you. She wrote, you do so much every day for us and take such great care of us. You are the reason I was brave enough to agree to number three. What the fuck? Like. She is so like in a totally different world from Chris. Like they are like Chris is on a totally different fucking planet. Yeah. Selfish, just completely mm-hmm. living a double life. Yeah. Is yeah. what he's doing. To be like, if you're that detached of a person, I think it's easy to do that. If you don't really 
care. You don't have that much attachment to the your family. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's interesting he's that a sociopath. Maybe they're just objects to him. Well, and I think he was able to like fake it in his relationship with Shanann clearly oh, yeah. to the point that she like believed, yeah, believed him and believed that he was still in it and was still, mm-hmm. I think she probably noticed that he was a little bit yeah. distant. I think they were having issues because mainly because of his affair, because they started having marital issues and yeah. we'll, we'll talk more about that and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, um, I don't want to say this like too early and like, but you know, before this everything right happens, before yeah. everything happened uh chris went on a date with this girl at lazy dog yeah 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 you know the that sports bar yeah. place yeah yeah over north though and he used his debit card when he was there and he normally used cash or like some something else or yeah. he had his like a private credit card but he had to use the debit card for some reason and so he was sketching out because he thought Shanann was going to see it. It was like the night before or maybe that night before everything happened. Yeah, it could um, be. Yeah, it was like really soon. He was sketching because he thought maybe she knew. Well, he was, was literally going to try to keep charge. it under wraps. I mean, he yeah. he clearly wasn't planning to tell her. No. At all Mm-mm. about but this she, affair. I think, I think as a woman, you start to just feel it. Yeah. And, you well, know. Well, as a man, I mean... I think you just become detached from one and then you become super engaged with another. I think mm-hmm. it's pretty obvious after yeah. a while. Cause I mean, yeah. as a guy, you're going to get tired of just faking the relationship to the point yeah. where it's just going to be, you know, glaringly obvious that you're, you're done. Like you're just like, you're out of it. Mm-hmm. And I think eventually his plan probably was to just like separate. I mean, they started talking about separation and things like that. So I think he was planning to do, to go that route, but it's yeah. just crazy that, you know, what happened. So on June 19th, Shanann Watt shares a picture from her first ultrasound and writes that her husband is the best dad us girls could ask for, which maybe part of this is portraying an image online could be yeah. like, she did have a bit that. of a, you know, following online and stuff. And mm-hmm. she did post, she was active on, on Facebook, especially. Mm-hmm. So it could be, you know, like I want to portray a, a really perfect image of, well, in those like, I think it's I think it's considered an MLM, but in those types of corporations, they really push social media. Like right. you've got to have a following to to sell. Yeah, you got to be active. So talking with and customers. like you don't want to post like a a picture and be like, oh, me and my husband had this horrible fight last night. Like right. no one put po- everyone posts the good things in their lives. Right, and it gives you such a false idea of so- what's going on in somebody's life. It can, mm-hmm. You can totally you can have no idea what's going on in someone's life by their social media. Absolutely. So just because she's smiling in a picture and they have an ultrasound and she says he's the best dad ever doesn't mean that's the reality at home. Yeah. By any exactly. means. Cause it, it's definitely not. So on June 27th, Shanann Watts takes her daughters, Bella and Celeste to Such North Carolina keys. for a five week vacation while her husband stays at home and works quote unquote. And we just take a moment to appreciate like how cute, their family is like oh, they're so minus cute. Chris, like Shanann and Bella and Celeste, like just yeah. sweet, yeah, oh, cute little it. girls. It's just ah, it just it literally dagger through the heart thinking about what happens. So to hard. Them. So she's out of town with the kids. Chris is like loving life because yeah. he can basically just see Nicole like kind of whenever. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Nicole told police that she went to Chris Watts' house for the first time on the Fourth of July to quote unquote, set up his diet and weight loss exercise goals, which is interesting. And he's, and she said that he invited her to his home, which is so fucked when you bring a mistress back to your fucking family's home. Disgusting. I can't believe she went in there. Like I can't imagine Being going yeah. into a guy's house seeing family and seeing, picture. yeah, the family pictures and the kids toys and stuff. Fuck oh, that. That's just fucked. man. How can you do that? No respect. No respect. No respect. He had no respect towards his family or no. nothing. Yeah. So he invites her over, he cooks her lunch and then she ate and left. But Chris told a different story to investigators later on in February, 2019. He said he woke up at Nicole's home the morning of July 4th to several missed calls from his wife. Who's probably like, cause he's not like actively engaging with her when he's got, when she's gone. Yeah. That's the whole thing is she's starting to really like sense something's up. Yeah. From text actually that she has with her friend, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute. But 
Chris is just like totally like putting her on the back burner. Yeah, wasn't like, she asking one of her friends like, "What do you think about?" Yeah, this? yeah, yeah. She starts like suggesting like something's up, like yeah, he's being so distant more mm-hmm. so than normal. But Chris also said he told Nicole that he needed to go home in case his wife called back, and that Nicole got mad realizing that she would always be the quote unquote other person, yeah. and that he would put his wife first. He told investigators she told him it would be best if they didn't see each other for the rest of the day, but later invited him back to her house. Hmm. So they're just, you know, sketching, doing sketch activity with each other. <laughs> sketch activity. It's one way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So on July 7th, the, the first phone call is logged between Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger. By July 10th, signs of tension begin to show in the Watts marriage, according to their text messages. So an actual excerpt of the text messages says, Shanann asked Chris, you okay? It's like you don't want to talk. I kept trying to talk and I had to dig it out of you. Chris replied, I'm fine, baby. The last few days at work have put a lot of responsibility on me with new people. I didn't mean to seem so short, boo. I love you to the moon and back. What a, what a fuck. So totally lying, just trying to appease her. And then Shanann responded, I miss you and I feel like you just want to work out and run. Chris claimed running helps clear my head. It will always, uh, it's a way to free it all. But Shanann didn't buy the excuse. She said, I wish my husband wanted to talk to me. Hmm. So she's like, why? Like, yeah. what's going on, man? Like, yeah, sensing it. You're just exercising and working out and running. Sure, bro. On July 14th, Chris Watts and Nicole go on a date to a car museum. That afternoon, Shanann Watts makes four unanswered calls to her husband. Like, oh imagine God. if that were you for a sec. Like, and if you were calling her, like, you were on vacation. Yeah. I'd and you calling were calling me hook. over and over again. You're and so I mad. wasn't picking up. I'd be, you better have a good reason for that shit. Or I'd be mad. <laughs> and clearly, they didn't have, like, find my friends on. Yeah. Because, like. You would have just like look at my location. If you saw me like some <laughs> random place or some random house, you'd yeah. be like, what the hell? Oh, I would. What you doing, bro? Oh, I would. <laughs> I would find out real quick. <laughs> and honestly, you'd probably like send one of your like friends or something to come. Like I'll send my subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but send somebody to go find where you are. If you're like, yeah, because mm-hmm. for all she knows, he could be like dead in a ditch yeah. or something like, yeah, it's possible. So throughout July, they're, Nicole and Chris are just going back and forth. And Nicole's sending Chris Watts semi-nude photos of herself, which he stores on a secret calculator app on his phone. That little bastard. Chris told investigators that part of what drew him to Nicole was the feeling that she was pursuing him instead of the other way around. This is such a sketch picture. She's like posing in the mirror. Who is taking this? It looks like a man is taking it in the I, background. And then look at like... She looks good from the back, but then you look at like the, the her pose to get this. She looks so uncomfortable. Like she looks it's like an unnatural. What pose. is she doing? It looks so natural and normal from the back, but then you see in the mirror, and you're just like, "Girl, her ribs are like gonna break." <laughs> it looks like her <laughs> back really is pushing breaking. it out. <laughs> yeah, she's trying really hard. Yeah. So that's actually this is actually a photo that is recovered from Chris's phone mm. from that calculator app. Who took Check it? so your weird. partner's calculator apps, guys. Oh, I'm going to make sure you don't have a calculator app. <laughs> oh, my God. Josh would never. I'd no. be shocked. Please. So later on that month, Chris Watts and Nicole actually visit the Great Sand Dunes National Park and spend a night at the nearby campground, which we've been to. Mm. He also gives her a love letter before leaving town to join his family on their summer vacation on July 30th. And look at this love letter here. A kiss, a touch, a smile, a squeeze, a look, a laugh, a tickle, a tease. What the hell? That's bro? some like Hallmark bullshit, by the way. He didn't write that. No. What? He's already saying he loves this girl, by the way. <laughs> okay. And then inside the letter, it had a bunch of lyrics to the song Down to Earth by the band Through the Roots. And it says like Nikki. So Nicole goes by Nikki. He has just like. Or no, he only wrote a couple notes at the bottom. The rest is the card. Yeah. Like how he dated it too at the top. 73018. <laughs> what the hell? Said you keep my engine roaring when you're pushing on the pedal. You bring me right back down to earth. I guess Ew. that is a lyric from it. Yeah. What 
I can't resist the feel you put me on another level when I'm around I can feel peace in the atmosphere so like I think one of the things is like unfortunately guys are so like driven by sex in a way and I think sometimes guys equate sex to love and they get the two confused and that was him here is like he's just like into sex I think I think I think he's like kind of I don't know. Maybe he wasn't getting what he, I don't know what the situation sex was. Sex addict. But yeah, a sex addict or something, you know. Sex addict. Addict. I don't know. It's I weird that. I think that's a real thing, right? Or no, it's not. I don't know. It depends on who you talk to. Yeah. Some people say it is. Some people Dr. say it is. Dr. Phil does not think it is a real no. thing. No, he doesn't. <laughs> but I don't know. I've had, it's interesting. People have mixed opinions on that. Do you guys think you can have a sex addiction? Because a lot of people argue that in order to have an addiction, you have to withdraw from it. Right. Well, that's the thing is like, can you have actual sex withdrawal effects? Like, yeah, I don't know. Mm, I don't really think so. Yeah. I, I think you know, could man. be addicted to sex in a sense mm -hmm. because there is that like Dependent rush that euphoria it. or whatever yeah. you want to call it. The, you know, yeah, climax so like, is in that like sense, it addictive. Addicted, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. It's interesting. I'm like, how much sex do you got to be having to get to that point where you're like addicted? Like, or just some people's some people's brains addicted to that mm -hmm. rush that feeling i don't know interesting i don't know it's a, it's a very controversial thing but so chris he flies to north carolina for the final week of his family's vacation on july 31st and his and shanann's reunion does not appear to be happy according to a copy of a text shanann sent to chris which was later forwarded to a friend and there's actually a picture of the text and i won't read all the way through it but it just says that he starts she starts noticing that he's just like withdrawn and the kids are are you know nothing to say to them yeah it's just a lot of i don't know do you want to elaborate on it um she says like i didn't tell your dad not to come to the party i didn't tell him not to call or text your daughter at her birthday i didn't tell this him this is to a friend too oh yeah this isn't okay, to so Chris. i thought she was talking about his father or actually it is to Chris. It is to Chris. Sorry. It's the forwarded text. Yes. So she's talking about his dad. Yes. And that's the other facet of this is that interesting. She had a very toxic relationship with his parents. Really? They, yeah, they did not like each other. Wow. They had a very different opinions of, of each other. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And that's a huge, that actually is a reason for that. He Chris puts out later for all this happening is like the pressure and the stress of their tumultuous relationship with his parents versus her and and her parents yeah and because basically like when the kids were with his parents mm -hmm. they were like in unsafe situations yeah. and they she didn't says, really your parents like, don't home isn't safe your mom isn't safe you yeah. can't let them tell you what you want but I, wow interesting so they were having major issues they were fighting about his parents mm -hmm. being there with the kids or, or taking the kids or whatever so mm -hmm. They were fighting about that, which I mean is a tough situation to be cut in the middle between, mm -hmm. you know, your parents. I think we've experienced that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, Except we we never fought though. Yeah. Which is nice. We were always on like the same team. As most of us have found out the hard way, including myself, getting into debt is easy, but getting out is hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Sky high interest rates can make it incredibly hard for you to break out of that revolving debt cycle. Thankfully, now there's upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt, which I know for me personally, if I had known about upstart a few years ago, when I was still digging myself out of credit card debt, I would have most definitely went and gotten an upstart loan because of that smarter interest rate. Because if you don't have great credit, then you get slammed with very high interest rates, which may even put you into debt more than you already are. What's great about Upstart is they go beyond your traditional FICO score or credit score when assessing your actual credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate, which is great. So they don't ding you on the credit part of the application. Upstart believes you're more than just a credit score. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. The best part is that once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next business day, the next day, which is great. 
Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or to make a large purchase. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash mile higher to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and it won't affect your credit, which is the best part. That's upstart.com slash mile higher. So we're now into August and on August 4th at 1245 AM, Shanann Watts sends her husband a long text message accusing him of failing to stand up for her after his parents exposed their daughter Celeste to nuts, which she was allergic to. This is another big uh, fighting point for her is like, she's that's part of why she's pissed is like, they're just like giving, exposing her to nuts. She's clearly allergic to them. Just kind of so being irresponsible. so irresponsible because nut but allergies you know. can be a serious thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, my nut allergy is only to peanuts, but and it's pretty mild. Like I get hives in the throat. But as a kid, yeah, it was a way worse. Like I'll never forget. There was a time I ate a Mr. Good bar. My parents was kind of how they found my peanut allergy. They gave me a Mr. Good bar. I ate it. And I then it those. was like one of the worst nights of my life. Like throat completely swelled up uh, and I like, you know, your breathing gets kind of restricted. And then I just like threw up everywhere. Did you go to the hospital? No. Cause my breathe, like what really always helped was milk because milk mm. coats your coats, your throat and mm -hmm. helps bring the swelling down actually. So I wonder like if you could, if you had a bunch of peanut butter, if you would die, maybe, I don't know if I had enough, maybe I could. I don't know. I mean, it's your body's natural way of saying like, don't put this in, it's in true here anymore to fuck up your mouth and stuff. Yeah, well. that's true. And I mean, the taste of it, I can just like pick out like you instantly. It. It's disgusting to me. Peanut butter. It smells bad. It tastes bad. It's horrible. Don't understand how you guys do it. Uh, <laughs> it's not that hard. Peanut butter is <laughs> pretty good. It was like, I love peanut butter. <laughs> I love peanut butter. So Chris later told investigators that he should have ended things with Nicole and focused on his family after learning about the peanut fiasco, which he referred to as nut gate later on because okay so i think shanann shanann was a very very hands-on mother mm -hmm. like she was on top of her kids health she was really into the whole thrive thing so she, i'm sure she's also looking at what's going into her kids and if you have something as serious as a peanut allergy like obviously as a mom you're get, like i would be really pissed too i completely understand why she made such a big deal about about yeah. that like I would be infuri I, infuriated yeah. if someone did that to my kid. Well, a grandparent that should know that. That's bad. And you would be angry with me if that was my parents that did that to our kids. Yes. And I'd I just like, was like, what do you want me to do? Or just yeah. like, I, what do you, like, they're yeah. fine. Or you would be pissed about it mm -hmm. that I wouldn't stand up to my parents. So that was like, you know, one of the big fights that was happening was Chris wouldn't stand up to his parents to get them to, to change their behavior uh, with the kids. And actually, in August 4th, Shanann Watts appears to have had a fight with her in-laws, which caused them to skip Celeste's birthday party that summer. She also tells her husband that he hasn't shown any signs of missing her in the weeks they have been apart. So there's more text messages going back and forth between them. Yeah, I'm kind of reading through it. That is, yeah. Just, it's hard to, it's hard to see things fall apart. Because he's basically asking her, like, you know, why haven't you missed me? And he's just kind of giving, you know, the typical answers. She's evil and willing to risk your daughter's life just to get under my skin. You and your dad are no different if you were okay with her behavior. So she was mad at the mom. Yeah, yeah, especially the mom. Interesting. Yeah, they did not. I don't think they really liked each other at all. I had no idea about that. This pregnancy, you have failed to acknowledge it, how I'm feeling. This first tri trimester is the scariest, most dangerous yet. We could have lost the baby at any point till delivery. I'm not going to be treated this way. Having the balls to protect our family and our kids. I should get a gold ducking, I'm guessing fucking metal, yeah. hanging on the wall for what I did, for handling it the way I did, because I had a lot of choice of words. So she was just basically saying like, I have every right to be angry at your parents for almost killing our daughter. Right. Which makes sense. So. So on August 4th, while Chris is still away with his family, Nicole is uh, doing searches for wedding dresses on the internet for over two hours. 
according to a review wow. or cell phone data. So they were like moving super fast. Oh like, my God. They were clear. They were saying, I love you already. And they just met basically like wow. two months she into was already it. looking at wedding dresses. So he must've been asking her or saying stuff about it. Well, he was like totally planning on this future with her. Clearly like he was planning to, you know, yeah. separate from them and just start a whole new life with somebody and just like, forget God. it, forget about the kids pretty much. No fucks given. So as August goes on, Shanann continues to just get all these signs that something's up with Chris and she's having problems with her and she's confiding in their friends, you know, as to what's going on with him. Listen to this first part of this message she's sending to a friend. Chris told me last night he's scared to death about this third baby. He said he's happy with Jess, Bella and Celeste and doesn't want another baby. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's terrible. Okay. Keep that shit to yourself. You don't tell a woman that as what is she supposed to do about it? She's pregnant. Can you imagine how like demoralizing that? Yes. Like, I don't want that. I don't want what, what you're carrying right. Oh my God. He's just scared. Everything will be fine. Once the baby comes, he has changed. I don't know who he is. He's not touched me all week. Kiss me or except for when I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. So strange. God, he's just dealing with her. He's you just could like tell going by that reaction. Just, he did not want the baby. No. You could tell in the video. Well, think about this angle too. Like in his mind, he could are he's clearly already thinking about divorcing his wife. Yeah. And he's probably thinking about, I got to pay child support for yeah. a third child. Yep. And, and it's just harder with the baby, too, like right. raising Co-parent. two different house. It just, you know, adding one more into the mix makes everything harder. It definitely things. makes it harder to leave. It does. When he had, so I feel like he was pretty resentful. Yeah. Of the whole situation. Clearly it was pregnancy. like, I think it was unplanned, like just from based on the reaction, like, I guess, but who knows? <laughs> who yeah. knows really? Yeah. I don't know. God. But on August 9th, Shanann Watts tells a friend that Chris Watts went to her ultrasound, but he was cold to her. So she decided to cancel the baby's gender reveal party, which is oh, terrible. So, so he's just being a total fucking downer. Not, not interested hey, at all. He for, she said he refused to hold me, said he's not there. He can't. What? Haven't slept most of the week. My eyes burn from crying so much. He refused to hold me. Oh, my God. I, what the hell? She said to him, how is this a few months? We were so intimate in what I thought in love when I left. He said he had a lot of time to think. Wow. She should never have. Well, he should have not cheated on her. God. She grabbed his hand during the ultrasound and he didn't grab back. I cringed. He rejected sex the night we arrived here. Only thing I can think of, even though I don't think he has it in him, is another girl. So it seems like she's having a thought, but she clearly doesn't think he's capable of cheating on her. Yeah. I feel like a lot of women feel that way. I feel like a lot of women are like, I don't know. But the, I mean, they were together eight years, two kids, no other instances as far as she knows of him cheating. So I guess you would believe that he probably didn't have him in, you know, in him to do it, but clearly he does. God. So now we're getting to, you know, that fateful day, but on August 9th, Shannon Watts leaves for a quick business trip to Arizona. And on the way there, she tells a friend that she had her best talk yet, quote unquote, with Chris Watts the night before. She also texts a friend a handwritten letter she has drafted to give to her husband in which she says she doesn't know how they fell out of compatibility. And this letter is just like, it's heartbreaking because she is just like pouring out her heart, all the love in her soul Mm -hmm. to this man, like literally giving him everything, Mm -hmm. every ounce of her. And he's just like, doesn't give a, doesn't give a shit. So the letter says, my dearest Chris, I don't know where to begin. I am so lost for words. I can't even explain how hard this pain is. The last five weeks have been the hardest. I missed everything about you. I missed your morning breath, your touch, your lips, kisses. I missed holding you. I miss smelling you in the sheets. I miss talking to you in person. I miss watching you laugh and play with the kids. That I love so much about you. I miss seeing you naked and on top of me, making love to me. Wow. Clearly like really putting out there like, hey. Damn, and she sent this to her friend? Uh, yes. Hmm. She texted a friend. Mm. Like a picture of the note. Yeah. Right. 
She said, I miss having you around when I felt alone and upset. I just flat out miss the hell out of you. We haven't been away from each other that long since 2012. The five, those like four weeks or whatever yeah. that they were away from each other, mm-hmm. which is like a month. So that's a while. Mm-hmm. She said, I really don't know how we fell out of compatibility or if that is someone else's words. The only thing that came, uh, that ch- the only thing that changed this month was everything going down with your family. I can't change what happened, but I can try to work things out with you and with them. But there has to be a mutual respect for everyone. I definitely deserve an apology because of Celeste. I can suck up her going against everything I said to her kids, but our daughter's life, and then it stops. But mm-hmm. probably goes on to the next page. But so she's she clearly Chris is in the wrong here, and she's coming to him, being yeah. like, "I'm sorry. Still. Let's work on this." Yep. Just continuing to try to make the relationship work mm-hmm. while Chris is just detaching himself yep. from the entire situation. Mm-hmm. It has a whole separate life going on. So on August 11th, Chris hires a babysitter saying he's going to a Colorado Rockies game with his coworkers. But in reality, he's taking Nicole on a date to a sports bar, the Lazy Dog in Erie, Colorado. Right. So this is very close to, to the day, day or two before. On the 12th, she sends a friend a draft of speech she plans to give to her husband when she returns to Colorado the next day. So the note. And then she sent a message to Addie explaining the accompanying text was what Shannon pl- Watts planned to tell Watts tomorrow night. And the message read, quote unquote, can you please tell me something? Because just like you, I'm in my head. I try to fix things and make them better. And this is making me crazy. I know that you need time. I want you to give what you're asking for and respect your space. I need some time. This place that I'm in in my head is not a good place. It is not healthy for me or Nico. I need you to help me help you. I need you to give just a little bit of what I did or didn't do. So I'm not going crazy in my head to figure it out. I know I can't fix this by myself that we're going to have to work together. Literally, this is the day before Mm -hmm. everything happens. Mm -hmm. And she's almost like pleading him like, please give me something like, yeah. She wanted it to work out. It was really him. Yeah, it was 100% him. So now we get to August 13, 2018, which is when this entire nightmare unfolds for the Watts family. At 1.48 a.m., a neighbor's surveillance camera captures Shanann Watts returning home from her business trip to Arizona. A friend dropped the mother, who's pregnant, off back at her home in Frederick. And there's surveillance camera showing her getting dropped off. So this is where we'll talk about Chris's version of, of events before we talk about the actual version of events. So Chris tells investigators that he was sleeping when his wife came home and he said that she initiated sex and then they went to bed. So she was like from that message and everything like she was like just try put it all out there like yeah like love me fucking love me. Between 4 and 5 a.m. police said Chris told them that he woke up around this time and they had an emotional but quote unquote, civil discussion with his wife about his wanting to separate, which is I feel like a really bad time. And she probably did not take that civilly. She probably freaked out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Can you imagine Mm -hmm. getting that flipped on you? Like all that flipped on you? Who would do that after having sex? That's so, so bad, dude. And just like at really like four or five in the morning is the best time to, when you're level headed and you can talk about serious things like i would never want to have this series of conversation after waking up at five in the morning would you no about separating like that's the feel like the worst time to do it yeah that sounds literally like the worst time possible to do that so this was so after they have this civil discussion according to chris he spotted at 5 27 a.m backing up his truck to his garage literally backing yeah. the truck bed into the garage a bit and at which he said he loaded his tools in his vehicle and left for work at a job site near hudson so Chris worked for a uh, oil company, oil gas company called Anadarko, which is a big company, um, and a lot of there's a lot of employees here in, in northern Colorado because there's a lot of oil wells and uh, tanks and things like that. Mm-hmm. So he worked. They lived kind of out in the boonies a bit. Um, Frederick's kind of a small town, like we mentioned, but then his job site is like w- just out in the middle of a field, like yeah. nothing around it, just out in the middle of nowhere, pretty mm-hmm. much. So that's where he said he was headed. He told officials that Shanann and his daughters were in bed when he left. And he said his wife told him that she was bringing the children to her friend's house that day. But he said that he didn't know the friend's name. 
which whatever, is a dude. bunch of bullshit. Like, how would you not know what friends your wife's going to take your kids to? Like, yeah, that makes that's sense. just a lie. So here's what happens next, according to Chris. So this is Tuesday, August 14th, 1.40 p.m. Frederick police were called to the Watts family home to check on Shanann after the friend who had dropped her off said she had answered calls or text and missed a 10 a.m. doctor's appointment. Very weird. Yeah. Right? And she was like on top of this stuff, especially doctor's appointments. It was yeah. for a pregnant something pregnancy, related yeah. to her pregnancy. Yeah. And she was clearly all about, you know, yeah. her health and mm-hmm. she would never, it was out of the ordinary that she'd miss it. And mm-hmm. the biggest red flag for her friend, Nicole was going to their home and seeing her car in the garage. Yeah. And being like, Whoa, what's yeah. going on? She yeah. would totally have left. Yep. Yep. So good that's friend. when she had good friend, good friend. Yeah. She was absolutely a good had her back. friend too. Like she and she had a huge group of friends because I think she met tons of women through her work. work. Yeah, totally. And and the family has even said that their friend's almost kind of a hero, like that she started figuring out something was up like right away. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because she was actually the one that phoned police. Yeah. And said, "Hey, this is weird. Can't get a hold of her. She her car's in the driveway. She's pregnant. So she could have passed out. I mean." Some health related could have happened. You know, yeah. she could have been totally like you have no idea what could happen to her, especially because she's pregnant and she was worried about her because she wasn't eating. Right. Like they, she was already having issues like keeping food down and stuff. And they were trying to make sure she was getting as much nourish nourishment as possible during her pregnancy. So she was worried that she may be like passed out, like you said, or something like that. And that the kids were possibly in danger. Right. Exactly. Like if their mom's on the floor somewhere and the kids are just, in the house like something could be really wrong medically mm-hmm. with her definitely so calls the police then calls chris tells him hey like what's mm-hmm. going on here like you need to get back here something's going on with shenan so chris is probably having a freak out moment in his head like oh, oh yeah. my god what's going on well i mean he knows what's going on yeah. but so he's rushing home because mm-hmm. the police are now showing up to the house and that's you know once chris the police are already there when he arrives and chris gives them access yep. to the house he's yep. like okay you can see there's video we go. body cam footage that's released where you can see him like just the officer pull up. she pulls up he pulls up fast like he like comes comes in hot the, side yeah. of the house parks grabs something out of the car comes running up to the officer and then is just like really quick like hey hey whatever and yeah then goes straight inside his whole reaction to yeah possibly his wife being like dead on the floor from a medical episode is which would be what a normal person would do. Like if it were me, I got called home and because somebody thought you might be something wrong with you in the house or whatever, I would have ran, you know, I would have ran out of the car, like rushed inside, searching everywhere, like looking and like Chris is just kind of like casually like walking through the yep. house, walking upstairs. Yeah. Like just, yeah. Like he, yeah. Some he's, Nonchalant. he acts like he's just doing a search warrant with them. Like, and he acts like he knew they weren't going to be home. Yeah. And he goes in and he comes up to it. He's like, they're not here. He's like, yeah, their their blankets are they're gone. He's like, they always take them with them. So they must be with the kids must be with his wife. She must took them to somewhere. Friend's house. But how? Her car's gone. So police are already starting to be like, this makes no sense. Yeah. And this is when it was starting to be on the local news. Um, and we saw it on TV. Mm-hmm. And I remember just watching his interview interview and being like, what the f- Fuck, this guy's sketching out. They like interviewed him and he's just like, I just want them to come home. Yeah, I'll show that in a sec. Okay. But I was going to say that when the police went through the house, they, you know, the first thing is she's a missing person, like something, right. some type of maybe mm-hmm. kidnapping. Who knows? Something happened. Burglar broke in, took yeah. her. Something like that. That's but it became pretty obvious, thought. I think, to them that he well, was yeah. acting so weird. Well, especially because they found uh, Shanann's purse on the kitchen counter and a cell phone yeah. uh, in the couch. And there was no signs of foul play either. Like that was the thing. There was no force entry. There was nothing out of the ordinary in the house. There was no immediate signs that something had happened, which the only thing is the bed was stripped, which we'll talk about in a minute, which Mm -hmm. eh, I mean, people wash their sheets and stuff. So it's not that weird. But when you find out what happened, it's like that's a when you're a possible murder suspect, it looks pretty weird. So after the police I go through the house with Chris. A neighbor invites them over to his property to review his home surveillance footage, which disproves Chris Watts' story that he his wife left with the girls while he was at work, because that's what he had said. Yeah. So the surveillance footage disproves that. 
that they never left. Yeah. And so, so that's the lie right there. Mm-hmm. And, and they're showing it to him right in front of him. Yeah, you video. remember seeing that. And yep. he's like starting to put his hand on his, he's starting to like clearly yeah. freak out. And that's when the guys, as soon as Chris walks out, the yeah. neighbor says to the cop, he's not acting yeah. right. And the yep. cop's like, something's yeah, wrong. something's wrong with him. Yep. Yeah, they knew. They I think knew that's when they quick. knew. Even I feel like the newscasters knew. Like, I felt like yeah. they were subtly like hinting towards that. Yeah. From the beginning. So the Frederick police actually requests the assistance of the FBI and the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to search for the uh, Shanann and the girls because they're like, this could be a, you know, a manhunt for somebody. There could There's a missing person mm-hmm. with her two girls. We got to find them. And they issued a missing endangered alert for the three that day. And later that afternoon, as Kendall's been alluding to, Chris Watts appeared on Denver 7 to talk about his wife and daughter's disappearance. And this interview is very, it just says a lot. And more more so you know more than chris i think even thought i think he thought he was fooling everybody but let's just see what what you think of it so he's outside the front of his house talking to the news cameras uh, chris watts w-a-t-t-s uh, what, what's going on right now around your house right now it's you got canine units the sheriff's department everybody's like they're they're doing their best right now to figure out like if they can get a scent and see where they went they went on foot, they went in a car, they went somewhere. And right now it's just like they've they've been on point, they're going through the house trying to get a scent and hopefully they can pick something up to where it's it's gonna lead to something. Liar. I she like she came home from the airport two AM and I left around five fifteen. She was still here. And like about twelve ten in that afternoon her friend Nicole showed up at the door. Like I had texted Shanann a few times that day, called her, say, you know, but she never got back to me, but she wasn't getting back to any of her people as well. And that's what really concerned her a people. lot of people is like, she's not getting back to yeah. me. Like if she doesn't get back to me, that's fine. Like she gets busy during the day, but she can get back to her people, which was very concerning. And her Nicole people? called me when she was at the door. Yeah, I don't know. And that's when her I came friends. Home. Yeah. And then walked in the house and nothing was vanished. Nothing was here. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't here. The kids weren't here. Nope, nobody was here. What's your wife's name? Shanann. S H A N A N N. What's your kids' name? Bella and Celeste. How do you spell Celeste? Uh, C E L E S T E. Oh my god. How old are you? Bella's four, Celeste is three. And, and so, how many times did you try calling her? I called her three times, texted her about three times just to say, you know, what's Piece going on? Like, I did, I could, after, after, the, after I called her and texted her once, it was like, all right. Maybe she was just busy, like it, she'd just gotten back, you know, like everybody's probably calling her from her trip. She just got back from Arizona and I figured just she was just busy. But when her friend showed up, that's what it was like it it registered like, all right, this isn't right. Oh my god. He seems like she's bullshitting so hard. I, I totally. Mean, right now I don't even wanna just like throw anything out there. Like I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and <laughs> with the kids. But I mean could she have been could she just taken off i don't know but if somebody has her and they're not safe like i don't know back now like that that that's what's so in my convincing like, if they're safe right now they're going to come back but if they're not safe right now that's what that's the not knowing part like if what they're not safe the- what last night i was I had every light in the house on i was hoping that i would just get just ran over by the kids running in the door and just like barrel rushing me but it didn't happen and it was just a traumatic night trying to be here what that makes no Dude, fucking yeah, he sense he started tripping during that whoa, part whoa he's like that's the not knowing part <laughs> what's so, the not what he's saying he had all, what the fuck he's saying he had all the lights on in the house waiting for them to come home and barrel rush him but they never came home that's his story is like they never came home even though the friend i mean he he's already getting Wait. tripped up because the friend yeah the surveillance footage shows the friend dropping her off yeah and he's saying right there that, i mean they've that well, wouldn't the kids be home with him yeah yeah exactly well where were the kids what does he mean C- come rushing yeah, in so that right there just is or like he's just saying i'm waiting i'm now i'm waiting no from what he just said he was like i left the lights on because i was just waiting for them to come home and he's like they never did i just want them back <laughs> i just i just want them to come back and if if they're not safe right now, that's what's that's what's tearing me apart. Because 
if they are safe, they're coming back. But if they're not, this 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 has got to stop. Like somebody has to come forward. Oh my God, what is he like? No one says that. No one talks like that. Like when you have someone missing, you don't automatically be like. And if they're not coming back, like no one says That's that. That's the tough part. No one says totally that. bizarre. Total. People are normally begging for if you've seen them, please call. Blah blah blah. No, he's he is sketching out at yeah, this point. Yeah, he is. He's and he's breaking down under the pressure mm -hmm. that he is being interviewed and he's on TV and he he clearly didn't think this yeah. through. So he's doing his best Dude, to bullshit. Imagine how nerve wracking that would be being a murderer and being interviewed interviewed by the the news and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think he planned this out. Like I think he I think it was so like thrown together that he really didn't have his story right or yeah. his plan yeah. set out. Like I think it was he's winging not, it here. Yeah. Clearly deceptive. Mm -hmm. So this raised all sorts of red flags and for police especially they're like, all right, we got to bring this guy in. We got to question him because it seems like he did something with with his family. So on August 15th, they bring Chris in for questioning and they give him a polygraph test and he's yeah. wigging out during the polygraph test because yep. he's like shit. Yeah. Yep. So they start asking failed him. the fuck out of that. Yeah, he did. He failed it hard mm -hmm. and they asked him questions like, do you know about the disappearance? Like clear things that yep. he lied about that yeah. show guilt that he had something to do with their disappearance. Mm -hmm. So after the polygraph test, he refuses to talk until he talks to his dad. Yeah. He's like, I have to talk to my dad first, which I think is he called his dad. I think his dad flew in from North Carolina to be yeah. there. And I, I really didn't know I about his family. I had just seen their court appearances back when this all happened so i felt really bad for them and i do i know i'm sure this is really sad but i thought his dad's behavior in the, the reaction to footage it, yeah. is very strange it is he has almost no reaction to hearing that his granddaughters are dead and that shenan's dead yeah, yeah his wife is dead yeah so that's what he says so that's it yeah so his dad comes into the interrogation room they're sitting down they're talking and Chris then tells his dad that, you know, he saw Shanann. She was, she killed yeah, the kids he essentially. He throws her under the bus. He's like, I don't want to get her in trouble. I, I just, I've been protecting her. And then he's like, I don't want to protect her anymore. And then, so the dad's like, Shanann hurt the kids. And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, and then I killed her out of rage. Yeah. Yeah. And then the dad's like reaction. He's just like, just, he just like looks down and. Almost like accepts it. Like yeah. right away is just like. Okay, well, I, my parents would be like, my dad would be like, what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? Probably like beating the shit out yeah. of you. Like, yeah, he would jump. He would be like, he'd be are you so kidding mad. Me? Like the police that have to rush in there to separate yeah. and be like, don't kill yeah. your, don't kill your son yeah. or whatever, you know? So, and like, I understand loving your child through anything, but like, dude, these are your grandchildren too. Right. Like they're also your flesh and blood. Just yeah. Terrible. The reaction is bizarre. It's very strange. I have definitely different kind of opinions on them after yeah. seeing well, the footage. It's pretty obvious that a lot of what Shanann was saying about them is probably yeah. right. Like they're yeah. yeah, she didn't have a good relationship with them. I never knew that. It makes a lot of sense. It does. I can see that it now. Does. So the actual um explanation of events that Chris Watt told police was that after telling Shanann he wanted separation, he saw her on a baby monitor strangling Celeste in another room. And then he told police that Bella was already blue and sprawled out on her bed, apparently dead. And then that's when he said that he went into a rage and ultimately strangled Sh Shanann to death. And then, of course, police are like, okay, Chris, well, if that's the case, then where are the bodies? Like, clearly you did something with the bodies. And then that's when he said he loaded up all three bodies onto the back seat of his or in the, you know. This part just makes me so upset. Like, I just truck. almost can't even. It's really hard to hear, man. It I makes mean, me so terrible. mad that he had the nerve to try to pin even after murdering her try to accuse her of killing her own daughters who she loves so much like it's so sick man. i just it's find so, that to be the most yeah. sick thing like to have no respect for someone being? that you already killed and then try to tarnish her reputation as a good mother pin it on her in order to save your own ass it's disgusting he, i mean he's a total fucking coward just a total coward scared little bitch but anyway uh, he lo he said loaded he loaded their three bodies into the back of his truck and then took him to the work site where he buried shenan and then dumped the children's bodies into oil tanks <sighs> it's so sick and they were talking about sorry i'm getting really sniffly i'm 
I knew I was going to cry during this one. I just get these girls were so cute. It was so it's so upsetting. It is. Story. It's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's like one of the worst things that could possibly happen to a human being, especially sweet and innocent children. Yeah. And a woman that did not deserve any Mm-mm. of this to happen. Mm-mm. But what were you going to say about the the tanks? Um, They were saying in the court footage that the opening the, on the top of the tank is only eight inches wide which is not wide at all no. not enough to fit and so a, they literally had scratches on them from being like shoved in the tanks which is fucking i just crazy. can't imagine as a father or a parent Seriously. doing that what the fuck Seriously. how do you do that to these kids like and they're saying to him like and they said you know he said that during it they were like daddy and they were confused and stuff and oh it makes me so upset it's really terrible and to think that shanann like if she knew that that was the fate oh of her God. babies, she would be so, and I'm sure like she probably does. Know. She probably does know. Yeah. And even though it happened after, it's just, it's so messed up. That is like, I can't, I really can't imagine as a mother thinking that that happened to your kids and that they were disposed of in an oil tank. Well, especially, and especially sick. the whole aspect that, you know, if, if this scenario played out the way that he said and, and Shanann, you know, yeah. did that. Mm-hmm. Why as a dad of your family, why wouldn't you bury your family together? Yeah. Or try to seek help for them. Even if you did like what he didn't do any of that. And no. instead he separated all of them, buried yeah. her a, a ways away from the tanks, tanks in a shallow grave. And then he put, yeah, put Celeste and Bella in different tanks, which that right there just shows that he was trying to cover up what had yeah. happened. Such a sick. And the fact that he even thought he was going to get away with this is insane. I know. I know. He really, really thought he could. But anyway, the the police actually figured out where they were because they used a drone actually that afternoon around 4.15 p.m. to investigate the oil and gas site where Chris had said their bodies were. Yep. Um, and they found a bed sheet matching the pattern of the pillowcases and top sheet at the Watts family home. And the sheets found at home had allegedly been thrown into a kitchen trash can. Police said they also spotted fresh movement of dirt consistent with the clandestine grave near the oil tanks. And it was at this point at 1130 PM that night, Chris Watts is arrested on suspicion of three first degree murder charges and three charges of tampering with a deceased human body. Oh my gosh. The following day on Thursday, August 16th, 2 30 PM, Chris Watts appears in Weld County court where he was denied bond later that afternoon. Shanann's body was found in the grave and the body believed to be, um, found was Shannon, of course, and the property was the Anadarko Petroleum Company, which was where Chris had been employed. Yep. And they fired him immediately, obviously, yeah. like the hell. So it was Thursday that the bodies were actually found and recovered. And uh, they think police think that Chris put, I mean, I mean, it's pretty obvious he put those mm-hmm. bodies in the tanks to mm-hmm. keep the smell. I mean, he li- he literally thought maybe a little bit that he was going to get away with this somehow. What did he think people were just going to believe world? they left? Someone took all three of them just a and missing, left? Yeah, they're just like this oh missing family. Oh my God, forever. Wow. Yeah. On Friday, August 17th, the Walt County Coroner's Office announced they positively identified the victims, um, both Shanann and her two daughters. Autopsies were conducted for all three victims, but the results were not immediately released. Chris Watts' attorney, and this was weird, you remember this? His attorney mm-hmm. requested for DNA samples. Yep, for their necks. To suggest the daughters were strangled by Shanann. Right. And what we find out later is that, again, this is just a flat out lie. The girls mm-hmm. were not strangled. No, they were the smothered. The cause of death was, was smothered. There's asphyxiation. <sighs> Shanann had marks on her necks, bruising yeah, from, from where strangling. you fucking strangled her. So his, his ass was, I don't know if this was a defense attorney that maybe was believing a story or what it was, but. They actually went and asked for the ability to do this, to take DNA, and the judge fucking dismissed that shit. He was like, no. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah. what is wrong you with you? You don't need to do it good. I'm glad they did that. And then later that night on Friday at 8.30 p.m., hundreds gathered to take part in a candlelight vigil for Shanann and her daughters. There was flowers, stuffed animals, mm-hmm. crosses, photos everywhere. They made this huge makeshift memorial outside yep. of their house, mm-hmm. and the community really came together. Totally. I mean, that's one of the great things about living in a a small small town town is that everybody knows Mm -hmm. of everybody Mm -hmm. and people really do come out and support each other 
mm -hmm. in most cases. People were devastated just I for mean, days. Just you, They would show footage of their lawn and there were people there all the time for days. People just crying, laying in the yeah. grass, crying. Praying and just, yeah, just... It was just so sad. Breathing, yeah. And I, mean, I think, like I said, all those videos of her, the fact that she left such a mark to look back on, like all these clips yes. of her is like, it's very eerie and it's always weird seeing someone's social media where they, what after they've done deceased, after they're yeah, gone. It's like yeah. a strange thing that we have to deal with in this time of life in the it 2000s. Is. Cause yeah, it, it's weird. Like, do you ever, do you have friends on Facebook that have passed that are still yeah, your friends? Yeah, yeah, I do have a few. And they get like their birthday notifications and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to delete this person, but no one's transferred it into like a memorial page yet or anything. Just the amount of stuff that we can have out there now is really weird and it makes you feel connected to someone like Shanann when you see all those videos of her sharing her personal and, stories yeah. and that's what they teach you in those MLM things to share a personal story right. connect Get people with people to connect. yeah um so that's what she was trying to do and it is quite possible she was really playing up her life you know sure making it seem like it was which is something so many people do on social media yeah making your life seem like something it's just not because it attracts people to it yeah if your life seems yeah. perfect or fantastic yep. it draws people's whose lives maybe not be that perfect to yeah. you and be because like, oh, they want to see that well she's on thrive so that must be why her life is perfect it's a great then, i mean it's a great selling technique <laughs> it really is that's the idea right but i was going to say on a positive note with you know having deceased profiles and things like that is it does the internet provides like a, a graveyard in a sense yeah. for people it's a good a thing virtual, in a, way. a virtual yeah. memory a memorial virtual memorial not graveyard yeah virtual memorial for somebody yes. that will exist as long as it's around i mean you know a great example of that is uh christina grimmie you know mm, she passed yeah. that was 2000 june of 2016 that yeah that i remember happened. that yeah we were on our honeymoon i was so freaked yeah, out by God, that. that was crazy yeah and you know she made youtube videos for years of herself singing so you can still hear her voice you can she left yeah. her mark on the internet you know and they're not professional recorded songs they're just her covering things in her room and i mean there's plenty of people like that and that i mean that's like for the last generation or two is is that's going to be the reality going yeah. forward is we're going to be leaving behind a virtual footprint yeah. or virtual Imagine memorial what be like with our like grandchildren like, yeah Ooh, they'd be, be like, oh my God, look at this cringy shit. I wonder if that's yeah. like YouTube in the future. They're like reacting to my grandparents' cringy social media from it's gonna 2017. Be. It's going to be, man. That's the reality yeah, that's is the it's reality. going to be like that. <laughs> I, know. I know. And things are going to be so far advanced from like when we're holding our phones, taking selfies of yeah. like, what are you guys doing? You guys look uh, ridiculous. Yep. You know, or just like all the fakery and Facetune pictures and stuff. They're going to be like, what know, are you God. freaks doing? Like. Be so I recently different. found out just how fake like everything is on Instagram. I didn't realize like how good people are at Facetune and stuff and how many things I thought were real that weren't. It's crazy. Oh, it's yeah. It blows your mind, honestly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how fake Instagram is like. Yeah. Oh, totally. Or like you'll see someone's Instagram and then you you know something about them like personally and you're like, mm, that doesn't just a add up. up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God. Oh, I know. Social media is a blessing and a curse. Just it is. like everything else, right? It is. Anything with technology seems to be that way. It's true. There's pros and cons. But on Monday, August 20th at 4 p.m., Chris Watts was officially charged with three counts of first degree murder, two counts of first degree murder for causing the death of a person under the age of 12 while being in a position of trust and one count of unlawful termination of a pregnancy, as well as th the three counts of tampering with a deceased body. So you got... they. They charged him with everything and mm -hmm. rightfully so. They went down on him hard. Well, they almost. Um, they tried death penalty. Was uh, is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, yeah. That they were going to do the death penalty, but his her family protected him, like begged for his life. Yep. They God. they felt they had the feeling that like, you know, nobody should have the right to take the life of another's, even if that person takes somebody's mm -hmm. life, which is interesting. Interesting, and I I think it's a fairly popular opinion but in this case it's like yeah i get that and i have trouble with it <laughs> it's hard yeah i mean the death penalty is just one of those it's like really hard because there's mm -hmm. again pros and cons to well yeah to to each side yes because at the same time it's like is it worse for him to be in prison for the rest of his life mm -hmm. do we with these memories alive? but then again do we want to 
does he deserve our tax paying money right. to keep him alive? This yeah, but, sick yeah, monster. But you're like, right. Like it might be worse to sit there and think about, cause I, I feel like that probably is worth than just be put worse than just being put out of your misery. You know, yeah. it's almost like putting the dog down. Like they're just, they're out. But if you have to sit there every day of your life and think about those beautiful girls and your beautiful wife, and once he's in there for a while, he's going to miss her so much. Oh, he's yeah. going to, Oh, he's, he's going to be like all this yeah. so hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's just going to be surrounded by dudes all the time. And he's going to think about which honestly he did this to honestly, her. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes his own life one day, like, or, you know, yeah, in well, prison. They watch him pretty close. Yeah. People like this, they, I don't know. He seems like such a sociopath that he yeah, wouldn't even that do he, that. Like he's he loves just himself. So he's a narcissist. Do you think he's like God's gift to earth? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy. So in the ensuing days, um, he appears in court to be formally advised of his charges against him. And, uh, and a friend of Chris shared a few days later how shocked he was to find out that the soon to be father of three was arrested for murder. And the uh, quote is from Chris Landon. He said, I believed until the other day that his entire life was those girls and that he would die for them. I never saw this coming. That's crazy. So he, he literally let like he led that he was his great dad, great husband and <laughs> faking it. Yeah. Was he fake? I, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, was he faking it this entire time? And he really wanted this like, or he just snapped, free, free life where he could just be, do whatever Chris wanted to do. Like it just, I don't know. It's, it's really crazy on a Saturday, August 25th an obituary is posted for Shanann and her daughters and reveals that the expectant mother was going to have a boy. And she planned to name him Nico Lee. And then on Wednesday, August 29th, a man called into Ashley Bainfield's crime and justice on HLN claiming he had a 10 month relationship with Watts. This was bizarre. This, yeah, yeah, this was weird. This and, interview was interesting with the police, with the, when they were basically oh, yeah. talking to him like. Well, I think that was a different guy. Oh, was it? So there was more than one guy claiming yeah, to there have was had two, a romantic relationship. Two guys. Yeah, that was some interesting. The guy that we had seen in the surveillance footage was a guy that said he like, you know, blew him just kind of like <laughs> had an encounter with him. Yeah. But and they were like, why are you here? Because you're not telling us anything. Yeah, else. And anything. he was like just telling things that were on the Internet and they were like, what? So it's it's interesting, though, that if there is, we don't have any way to know if this is r real or this right. actually happened or and not. There's so much rumors around this. Case. Yes. And again, like we've talked about before, like people insert themselves in the cases in order to just, you know, either make themselves known. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to do that in this case. Yeah. And like admit that you like, you know, had intercourse with a murderer, you know, like why you'd want to do that unless you're sick too. But yeah, it's really bizarre. I, the man was later identified as Trent Bolt. It's very weird. It is weird. He said he claimed their relationship lasted 10 months and ended in April. <laughs> so that's if true. that's the case, then Chris was like bisexual and like, yeah. just like having sex with whoever pretty much, mm -hmm. which again, kind of falls into that theory of like, maybe he was a sex addict or something. And he just yeah. was like, that's what it was for him is like, he just constantly had to have maybe something new. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. really weird. It's a bit exciting. Why people stuff, yeah. would do that. But then on Saturday, September 1st, hundreds of mourners gathered to pay the respects uh, to Shanann and her two girls at a memorial at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Pinehurst. No one mentioned Watts during the 90 minute ceremony, which they shit. live streamed on Facebook. And then on Tuesday, September 4th, Chris was denied bail and forced to remain behind bars until his trial opened. He was placed on suicide watch while in jail, where he spent 23 hours a day in his cell because he was in protective custody. Yep. Also because the case was so big, like mm -hmm. everybody had heard about it and yeah. people like this that annihilate their family do not, not have a uh -uh. good time in prison at all. Mm -mm. He'll, he'll probably have to be in solitary confinement. I would imagine yeah. like separated from time. everybody. Mm -hmm. If not forever, like, yeah, it's just like, it's, he deserves it. I hope one he of those like unforgivable sins. Like you don't yeah. fucking do that. You don't mm -hmm. kill somebody period, kill but babies. kill your family and your kids. So like bizarre. what is wrong with you? And obviously while you're in protective custody, you have no access to any of the normal things that other prisoners do. He had one hour per day. He was allowed to leave a cell and make phone calls to his family or his counsel. And then on Friday, September 7th, Shanann's brother, Frank took to social media to thank his family supporters for all that they had done for his sisters and nieces deaths. 
He was quoted as saying, I wanted to take a minute and thank everyone who has helped us in every way possible. And his name, his brother's name is Frank. And he wrote on Facebook that from best friends and family to people all over the world, it's truly an honor and a blessing to be part of this family. Mm. And in the writing, he also alluded saying that never in my wildest dreams would I have ever dreamt such a hor- horrific nightmare and just plain heartbreaking tragedy would ever happen to my regular, regular old happy family. We lost so much in a blink of an eye, but we also gained love and support from people all over and they became part of our family. I mean, people are just so shocked by it that I think we all like all, all of us normal humans across the world were like, how could you do this? And like, yeah. after you see how perfect his family and seemingly his life was, it's like, what happened? What happened? Yeah. Like it just didn't make I'm sure any he sense. I'm it so much. Disgusting. So in November on uh, November 6, Chris Watts pleaded guilty to the charges he was facing in order to uh, avoid the death penalty. Plus, obviously, the family's work in the DA to try to get that off the table. And, uh, and then it came down to November 14th. Chris Watts' parents actually spoke out, claiming their pregnant daughter-in-law would have been more than capable of murdering the little girls, all of whom their son had pleaded guilty to killing. This was actually something that they, they said. said that? Yeah. Well, fuck so they them. like, they like believed like the story, like his, they believed Chris, I believe from the beginning, like after, oh as soon as he got gosh. arrested and they actually did say this. Wow. They said the relationship between Shanann and Chris was very hard. Ronnie, uh, her, uh, Chris's parents, Ronnie and Sydney said in an interview and they said, you have to get to know her to be around her. Put it that way, his dad said. The couple claimed their son was in an abusive relationship with her, which is like what? clearly oh delusional. Oh my God. So, I feel bad for ever saying that I feel bad for them, their family. Yeah, they're, they... I figured as the grandparents, they were like, oh my God. No, they, they t- took Chris's side. Jeez. Well, it makes sense because the, in their court interviews, they were like, we will always love you. They said it so many times. We will still love you. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, blah. totally. And they claim that Shanann isolated Chris from his family. And it was a very hard relationship with her as far as I'm concerned. Chris's mom said, I couldn't do anything right. And when asked if their son was capable of killing the children, Cindy instead pointed to Shanann. She literally said, I would say she's more capable than Christopher. Christopher, I don't see him capable at all. And if something happened that night and that did happen god forbid if it did happen what was the trigger why what happened i just want the truth because he's not the sociopath next door he's not the kind of person that would yeah, do something he like is, that dude sorry wow just completely denying it all and being like i mean i think a lot of parents do that when their kids do some heinous crimes like this is they're mm-hmm. like how could my little baby that i raised do yeah, ever do something yeah. like this and his whole life he never showed signs of this but but again he he's totally a sociopath and if you're a sociopath you're good at you know, fooling people. You're good at, you know, sort of faking it to make it. And in a statement to a TV station, actually, the parents of Shanann said the comments made about their daughter were vicious, grotesque, and utterly false. Quote unquote, their false statements, however hurtful and inaccurate, will never alter the truth about Shanann and will never alter the truth about the crimes committed by their son, Chris Watts. Shanann's memory and reputation deserves to be protected and her family is fully prepared to do so. And then it was on Thursday, November 15th, when Chris Watts' mistress, Nicole, said she had no idea who he was and what he was capable of until it was too late. She actually came forward after a lot of speculation about her identity and after the arrest affidavit revealed that Chris was having an affair with an unnamed woman around the time that his wife, who at the time was 15 weeks pregnant and two daughters went missing. Nicole said he's a liar. He lied about everything. She explained that Her and Watts, whom she described as soft-spoken and a good listener, had met at work, and they started talking in June and began a physical relationship a few weeks later, when Nicole noticed he hadn't been wearing a ring and found him attractive. So he was totally playing the um, divorce card. Bullshit. And Nicole went on to claim that they saw each other up to five times a week and that Watts said in in July his divorce was finalized, which is not true (laughs) at all. Oh my god. And then on August 13th, Chris allegedly texted her saying his family was quote unquote gone. Shanann had taken their daughters on a play date and they hadn't returned. She said he told her. So there you go. He was like, she took them and just disappeared. And this was when Nicole said that she seemed, she knows that something was off about Chris's story. And then she saw him on the news 
and that his wife and the girls were missing. And she thought if he was able to lie to me and hide something that big, what else was he lying about? A lot. Yeah, everything pretty much. She she said she confronted him about his family's disappearance and he showed little emotion during the exchange, (laughs) which is fucking terrible. And as soon as the bodies were found, that's when she was like, Hey, I'm the mistress. I'm, I'm the woman. Like, yeah, good for her for coming forward though. Yeah, seriously. It's be hard. And I mean, she like denounced him. Was like, "Fuck yeah. this guy!" Like, yeah. uh, if I had any inkling that this was what was going on, I would have never associated myself with him. Yeah. So I mean, it's like, can you blame her for mm-hmm. what she did? I mean, she kind of knew, but at the same time, it's like she did think he was divorced or getting divorced. Like, so I don't know. But on Monday, November nineteenth, Chris Watts was sentenced to five life sentences without possibility of parole. His sentence included punishment for other crimes, including unlawful termination of an unborn child. Rightfully so. Five life sentences. So basically, he's he's going to die in prison. No questions. There's no way he's getting out. Thank yeah. God. The judge actually quoted saying, I could objectively say this is perhaps the most yeah. inhumane and vicious crime that I have handled out of the thousands of cases I have seen. I couldn't believe that, but it makes sense. I mean, it's just so brutal. It is. It's complete savagery savagery yeah i mean it's like an animal it's mm-hmm. it's like an animal might do that in the wild to their to their kids, to their yeah. kids and like do something like that yeah annihilate their family and there's actually a a term called uh familicide family familicide or something like that <laughs> there's actually a term yeah. for this mm-hmm. exact thing where a male usually kills his entire family but oftentimes takes his own life too and that's yeah. what's interesting about this is that he didn't do that yeah and in fact, he actually says that he got a gas can and was planning, was going to just yeah, blow himself up, I guess. But then he didn't because he didn't want to make things worse for other people or hurt other people. But it's Is like, that why he had the gas can with him? In the, yeah, that's so why he was, was going to do it. He was planning to thing? that morning when he was loading him up, he was planning to, to do that. Wow. To himself to just boom, blow it up, I guess, at the oil tanks and stuff. Take everybody with him. Yeah. Wow. That's intense. Yeah. God, I'm glad he didn't do that. And they caught him and were able to so prosecute him. Recently, somewhat recently in February, 2019, he gives an interview while he's in prison to investigators, including a detective from the Frederick police department, the CBI, um, as well as an FBI um, at the prison where he just tells, tells it exactly how it is and exactly what happened. And, I'm going to read through exactly what happened according to to him, the truth, quote unquote. And beware, this is a bit disturbing, but I think it's important that we know exactly what happened. So he said the couple had been having issues and while Shanann was on an extended vacation with her daughters in North Carolina that summer, Watts had started an affair with a woman at work, which is Nicole. When his wife came home that morning, she got in bed and about half an hour later initiated sex, Chris said. He told investigators he felt like it was a test, quote unquote, and that the sex felt strange. He theorized that it may have been a trigger point or like you hit the push button on a bomb and it just blows up. That's weird. That is really weird. That like, I don't know. I don't know how that that works exactly. But according to Chris, the version of events that happened was the two apparently fell asleep after sex and he woke up a few hours later to get ready for work. He said he woke up his wife to talk before he left, straddling her as she lay in the bed. He said the two had a 15 to 20 minute conversation during which Shanann cried and said she knew there was someone else. Wow. While Chris denied the affair, he said he admitted he didn't love Shanann anymore and said that they weren't compatible. So just a dropping a complete bomb on Shanann. Mm -hmm. She probably freaked out. And she probably, oh, she probably freaked out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's when Shanann out of probably anger said, you're never going to see the kids again, Mm -hmm. which I mean is a pretty, justified response to yeah. getting that bomb people dropped on you. People say that often. all the time. Yeah. yeah. He said she also told him to get off of her because he was hurting the baby. And that's when he said he quote unquote snapped and he put his hands around his wife's throat and began to strangle her. And he said, there's a part of him that, that feels like the idea of killing his wife was quote unquote implanted in his mind and he had no control over it. What? That's weird. So if there's any truth to that, that I don't know what that insinuates, but there's no truth to that. No, it seems like a, just like a rational explanation, at least to him as to why he did this. It's just an excuse during the trial. When a prosecutor said that it takes two to four minutes to strangle someone, 
Chris said he wondered, why couldn't I just let go? So he feels like something kind of like took over him and just like kept doing it. And I think it's just like, I think adrenaline is huge when you're in these types of situations and Mm -hmm. adrenaline just like fuels you. And Mm -hmm. if you're enraged too, Mm -hmm. those two together can just, I think. God, but to to get to that point, I think certain people are like Chris Watts and could get to this point. But most people I feel like have a sense to stop. Yeah, and not, and not think to like bad. put or your hands around someone. somebody and yeah. choke them. Like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Chris told investigators that Shanann never fought back or screamed and it was all over. He said he was shaking. And when Bella came into the room and asked what was wrong with mommy, he said mommy didn't feel good, he remembered saying. He said that he then wrapped Shanann's body face down in a bed sheet, which is why the bed was stripped. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the police footage and dragged her down the stairs to put in his truck, just like trash, took her out like trash. Ugh, so terrible, dude. His daughter, Bella, watched the whole scene and cr- Ugh, cried, God. asking again, is mommy okay? Can you imagine Ugh, like the kids just God. horrible? And, uh. Such a terrible, terrible story. And when Chris came back inside, Celeste was waking up in her bedroom. So he took both girls and put them in the back of the truck on the bench seat, which is like a little seat behind the front seats. Yeah. And each of them brought a blanket and Celeste brought a stuffed animal. And he says that at this point, he said it felt like someone else had control over him, and that's when he put the gas can in the back of the truck because he felt like he could kill himself at the oil site where he worked and planned to dispose of Shanann's body. Wow. Ultimately, he told investigators he decided not to go through with that plan because he feared he could hurt more people if something caught fire at the site and exploded. Uh-huh. Which I don't think it was I'm, I don't think it was close to well, anything you other don't care big, about uh, your own family. Why yeah, would you care, why would you like care about anybody people? else? That's what's weird. That doesn't, that's, yeah, I'm not buying that bullshit. Little bitch to he's have a coward. Done he's it. a complete yeah. coward. So he said once he drove out to the site, he told investigators that his daughter had dozed off and laid in each other's laps. At one point, he said Bella remarked, Daddy, it smells. Oh my God. And when they got to the site, Chris said he pulled Shanann's body out of the truck and laid it down on the ground near it where he would eventually bury it in a shallow grave. He said both girls asked him, what are you, what are you doing to mommy? God. And then he said he returned to the truck and Cece was first. He said he strangled her with a blue Yankees blanket as Bella watched sitting next to her, not saying anything. When investigators asked what he was thinking as he did this, Watts said, I wasn't, if I was thinking this wouldn't have ever happened. Oh my God. After he killed his first daughter, he said he then carried her body over to the oil tank and dropped her in. What the hell? Then he walked back to the truck and Bella asked him what happened to Cece. And then in a softer voice, is the same thing going to happen to me as Cece? And these girls are are old enough that they They know know. what's going on. Like, oh, God. Just like thinking about these poor girls, like, uh, just all of them. It's just like so heartbreaking. I know. It's seriously such a terrible story. He said her last words were daddy no, which is just like, oh, God. Ugh, why? Crazy. God, I can't. I why? I can't even. He said he hears Bella saying those two words every time he closes his eyes. Good. I fucking hope right. I hope he's haunted day. by all of them. Ugh, it's horrible. So why did he kill his family? Why did he do this? What, what, what caused him to come to this point? Like, what the hell? Why annihilate your family? Complete psycho. Chris said that he thinks he may have taken his pent up anger with Shanann out on everyone that morning. He said he had not ever been that angry before and believes it may have stemmed from the feeling that Shanann drove a wedge between him and his family, which all just sound like convenient excuses. Yeah. Yeah, none, totally. of, none of the things that were happening in his life were anywhere near a, a point where they would cause you to resort to violence. Yeah. This mm-hmm. was him completely yeah. just being selfish and angry and mm-hmm. thinking about only himself and the life that he wanted mm-hmm. in his head. This he probably created this fucking grand fantasy in his head. Well, what is I was gonna to like, like with her. Get away from his family and the responsibility with that and yeah. go live in, you know, fairyland with Nicole and start over. I seriously can't believe he did that. It's he so said weird. his He said his mother never approved of Shanann and that the family felt like she had taken him away from them when the couple moved to Colorado. <laughs> they sound controlling. Seriously. Annoying. Yeah. He was like, it was just a fuse, and that fuse hit its end. Well, and it just blew you know, up. People like him come from strange families sometimes. Bad people. 
I don't know. I mean, I guess it's. I think it's of, all him, man. I think. I don't know. They just like rub me the wrong way. His his parents. But in the in this interview from prison, he says he looks outside every day and wonders what it would, what he would be doing if he hadn't killed his family. So, <sighs> I bet you do, dude. Yeah, oh I'm sure God. he does, and I'm sure he's just wallowing in his. I mean, hopefully he's fucking grieving <sighs> and realizing that he just he fucked up to the yeah. point where he ruined there's his no life. going he back. Ruined he all ruined their lives. He ruined. Yeah. There's literally no purpose for him to live at this point. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, and I think he realizes that and I don't know, but you know, listening to the interview, it, it didn't even seem like he was that there was that much like remorse there in his voice. No. And I would play it for you, but it's really loud and just yeah. kind of, it's better heard like on yeah. sound. So I'll link it for you guys. If you want to hear There's his definitely ass a lot talk of about good it. clips. If you're curious about this case, I'll link online. that documentary you watch, yeah. which just had all the footage in it. Yeah, documentary. Even though it's a fucking yeah, joke. <laughs> it's just stuff put together, but so the, so the one other motive that kind of plays into the whole, like their picture perfect life wasn't really perfect that we, we didn't touch on yet. It was the fact that they were in major financial. Right. Right. Uh, we didn't struggle. touch on this yet. And that obviously when a married couple is in under financial stress or there's turmoil about finances, yeah. then it can create it's a stressful. lot of problems. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it can, I mean, I've seen it in my own family and so have you. Yeah. Especially when you're taking your side bitch out on dates. Yeah. Seriously. When the bank account's low. Yeah. And they were, they were filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, it was bad. They were like down to nothing pretty much. They were $70,000 in debt racked up by student loans and credit card purchases and their house was like really nice. It was a really big house and expensive for mm -hmm. up north mm -hmm. and in that area. So they were going to have to sell the house. It was, it was, yeah. it was kind of everything was falling Unraveling. apart for them. Yeah. And I, and I mean, I get like all those things can add up, but it's just like, it, it should never add up to violence and let alone fucking annihilating no. your family. So, I mean, to me, it seems like he, his reasoning for murdering his family is he wanted to have this carefree life with his you know, this mistress of his and that maybe that fantasy just kind of overtook him along with all the other things built up, kind of just like led him to a point where you explode. And again, I just don't see how you do that and why like kids, your children, like what, like there's plenty of examples of men where they, you know, the killer wives or whatever, but I feel like it's more rare that you see them just annihilate the whole family. Like, and, yeah. And not that I'm saying that any, you know, anybody should be murdered let alone you know family member or wife or anything like that but just from other cases that are out there of this happening it's mm -hmm. like i think that's why this was just so shocking, shocking yeah. and just heartbreaking was and he just really doesn't look like a murderer when you first see no him. and that's the thing in all the pictures and yeah, all the videos they look like just such a nice normal family. happy family yeah, and ends in wild complete disaster but i mean the, my final thoughts are just i want to pay my respects to yeah, Shanann and, and the kids and just what I felt like it's important to tell her story as tragic as it is and so that you know they're always remembered and I mean they're always going to be because of Facebook and all the videos and, and just you know her family and memories and everything but obviously this was pretty close to home for us as far as you know location and everything so that was yeah. important that we cover it and yeah you know you, you can draw your own conclusions about it but I think we can all agree that Chris is just a piece of shit. And yeah. honestly, I, I personally don't think he deserves to even be breathing and living still. Like after yeah. all this, I think I lean towards that way too. I don't honestly. think there's any point in keeping him alive. I mean, Sicko. such a horrible story. Just horrific. What good can he do now? Like there's nothing. It's just a waste of life. If you think that there is such a thing, but I don't know, let us know what your guys' thoughts are on this and, and uh, you know what what you know about it and i don't know it's it's a different case that we covered today so let us know if you want to see more things like this or more stories like this it's it's extremely hard and, and emotional yeah and uh it, this was honestly kind of hard to get through to talk yeah. about this for for so long but hopefully you found this episode of the podcast interesting if you did make sure you subscribe but yeah thanks again for joining us for another episode of the mile higher podcast stay safe out there and stay well We'll see you guys next time.